Welcome to Skills to Pay Your Bills and to the special segment called the Wealth Zone University. I'm your host, Don Moraney. And as you know, the purpose of the Skills to Pay, uh, Skills to Pay Your Bills and the Wealth Zone University is to change your mind about money so that you can change your financial future. Today, we're going to talk about something that's really near and dear to my heart. It is doing good, doing well, and helping out your fellow man and the national and international community. And our guest today is a person who has dedicated her life to helping other people. And I want you to meet her, get to know her, and also get to know her company. Our guest today is my all-time <laughs> favorite person. And she's got an organization that we really, really need to find out more about. So Kimberly Fogg, welcome to my show. Absolutely. Thank and you, I want man. you to tell us about who Kimberly Fogg is and then get into your nonprofit organization called Global Sustainable Partnerships. Thank you so much, Don, for the invitation. I am so happy to be here. Thank you for supporting GSP and to help further our cause. Um, Global Sustainable Partnerships started back five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I lost my dad and I went to Tanzania with a, one of my best friends to grieve. She invited me to Tanzania. And while on safari, I saw all these five or six little Maasai children in the middle of the Serengeti. And I said to our driver, what are these kids doing here? We've just seen lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, I mean, <laughs> prides of lions and elephants, hyenas, you name it. And we had been driving around for hours, so I just was, where are these children going? And they had about like, like 25 to 30 oxen with them. And mm -hmm. so he said, they're going to fetch water and they're going to water their oxen. And I just said, but we've been driving around forever. And he says, well, not only does it take them forever to go and fetch the water, the water's become so contaminated that a lot of kids don't make it back because don't it back. they don't make it back. They die because they become dehydrated so quickly and they, they just die. And I said, in this day and age, our little children are still dying of contaminated water. And I just, from that moment, I had this epiphany, and I think it was God and, and Dad in heaven saying, you need to do something about this. Wow. So hence, the Global Sustainable Partnerships was born and uh, got back to Michigan and started doing my research and found this wonderful, wonderful product called the Hydrate Biosand Filter. And uh, we have now installed almost 720 filters. Matter of fact, today 100 filters arrived in Tanzania. Yay! <laughs> it's been a long journey. It's taken six months to get those filters six in country. Months. Yes, um, we currently have filters in 80 primary and secondary schools. We have uh, 208 households, uh, three orphanages, 57 government and health-based health dispensaries that now have our filters. Wow. Now, yeah. How long has Kimberly Fogg been doing this? Five years. We just celebrated our fifth anniversary on October the 11th. Oh, and happy anniversary. Thank you very happy much. And we just celebrated our fifth anniversary on World Water Day on uh, March 22nd. So that was a big celebration for us. So we were able to raise a lot of funds for an additional, our goal is a thousand filters, so we need an, an additional 320 filters to reach our goal. To reach your five year goal. To reach our five year okay, goal. 320 filters. Yes. Okay, I gotta keep that number in my mind. Yes. Now tell yes. me, World Water Day? World Water Day is sanctioned by the United Nations, and it basically is a day for everybody around the world to. Uh, to bring awareness of the lack of clean water. Um, there's millions and millions of children that die every day under the age of five because they have lack of clean water. Um, there are mothers that are going uh, without water every day and water, you know, without their, for their families because mm -hmm. they don't have access to the clean water. So we're trying just to help, you know, as much as we can to provide access to clean water so that mothers can have, can give their children clean water, healthier families, healthier communities, and, and that's what our goal is. Okay, so you, Global Sustainable Partnerships is focusing on Tanzania. We are currently Tanzania. in Tanzania. Tanzania. Yes, um, we have been asked to come and do some work in Kenya. Uh, we've been asked to do some work in Ghana. We've been asked to do some work in uh, South Africa, in Sierra Leone, uh, I just got uh, a request to come into um, Liberia. 
wow. but it's all about funding. Um, if I could go to all these places, I would be on a plane, I'd be there all year long. Mm -hmm. But uh, our, our biggest challenge is the funding. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about funding in the second segment okay. because I really want our audience to get to understand the value of participating with the nonprofit community and what the wonderful things that the nonprofit community is trying to do. And they need our support in order to help that happen. But I want to talk more about global sustainable partnerships, what it does, how it does it, the good that it does, and also the, the many, many people that it that it helps and has helped over the last five years. Yeah. So how does global sustainable partnership work? You're the executive director, you're here in the States, but I understand you have people on the ground in Tanzania. I do, we have five staff. Okay. And I'm, the only things that come from America are the filters and me. Okay. Everything else <laughs> is in country. Okay. So I have five staff and we have four gentlemen and one young lady who's our country manager. And we started out with the gentleman helping us sieve and wash the sand and gravel. The filters are made out of sand and gravel and the beautiful way that this technology works, it's such simple technology. The sand actually cuts off the oxygen supply of the pathogens that causes sickness and illnesses. Mm -hmm. And so you have to wash and clean the sand and gravel. And one of the biggest things that I love to do is sit in the gravel pits with the Maasai women who actually make these bracelets and we go through and we pick out the the sand the gravel and the sand Maasai bracelets yeah Maasai bracelets I love these um, and so what we do is we 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 purchase the sand we purchase the gravel we purchase all of our buckets we purchase our our um, our tarp we use local transportation and we use our teachers and we have been so blessed because our teachers have basically has basically become our workforce. The teachers in the schools. The teachers in, in the schools, because we started out with providing filters for our kids in primary and secondary schools. Okay. And when the teachers realized that, oh my gosh, these kids are not coming to school sick, it must be the clean water. Mm -hmm. And they're paying attention because they don't have worms in their stomach. And then they're like, well, we're going to start taking water home. So they started taking clean water home to their own families. So they realized, oh my gosh, we can really break the cycle of contaminated water if we have water in schools and then water at home and when they and another thing they realized is that the kids were now taking clean water home to their own homes mm -hmm. so that was our goal to get the water into the hands of the kids because i just thought that the kids would go back to their, tell their parents oh my gosh we have access to clean water so that opened up the door for us to start looking into households so we have these community meetings and we meet directly with the women because they are the gatherers of water along with the girls and one of our biggest things is we want to make sure that we keep girls in school so if we can provide them with having access to clean water and not having to go and collect water every day then they could be in school and, and continue to learn and have education. So that's one of our, our, our big things that we want to do too, is to make sure that we're keeping girls in school. Wow, there's so many things to talk about. So yeah, it's so mostly the young women in the girls. Tanzania, the girls that, yes. that actually go back and forth. Throughout and, Africa, yeah. they're the water gatherers. Is that right? Yeah. And so you're helping number one to make their lives easier, but also the young girls, I guess that they're gathering water, they're not, they're not in school. Or, Absolutely. And so you're helping just a, a, to broaden the entire spectrum of uh, the ability of, of women and young women to take their place in the world. Yeah, we are. And, and another big thing is that we're making sure that mothers have access to clean water because if they can't give clean water to their children, their children become sick, which means they can't go to work and they can't make a living for their families. So it becomes a perpetual cycle of poverty. So, you know, we're trying to make sure that we give the mothers clean water so they can make sure that their kids have access to clean water and they're not getting sick so that they can go to work and provide uh, for their families. Okay. So the 700 filters that you've delivered, most of them have been into the schools there? No, we, we are now in 80 primary and secondary schools. Okay. We're in 208 households. We're in three orphanages, two churches, and 57 health dispens health and uh, I'm sorry, government and faith-based health dispensaries. Wow! But the really cool thing about yes. our household is we don't do handouts; we do hand ups. Okay, I like so that. So that's what I love. So we actually donate the filters to the schools, but 
households have to pay for their filters and one of the ways that we got the women to be able to pay for their filters is that we went into these households and we talked to the women mm -hmm. and we asked them you know would you give up something a sacrifice to be able to give clean water to your families and they said yes well most people have two or three cell phones in their household so I'm saying well if you can have a cell phone you can have clean water yes so we partnered with a local bank and so the mothers have to give up one cell phone and that money that they would use for a voucher to go uh, towards putting money in that cell phone, mm -hmm. they would now put that money in a savings account. And so now they started saving up for their filters. filters. And now our mothers, 208 households have filters and now they're continuing to save for other household goals because now they know how to save their money. Wow. So the yeah. things that you, you started out doing have an exponential effect, good exponential effect, yeah. in terms of just the day-to-day -day ability of these young women to broaden their lives. Absolutely. But also now we're, we're into money and savings and economics and all other kinds of things. Absolutely. So how does the water filter get from United States to Tanzania? Well, it's been a long process. <laughs> 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 but they arrived today, so I'm very happy. But, but uh, normally it's just what they you, they go to a, a port and then they get shipped? We, yes, we mm -hmm. ship them from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay. The, that's my hometown, so mm -hmm. the filters are manufactured in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay. Um, and then we ship them to New Jersey, and then from New Jersey they go to Kenya, and then there's a, it's a pass-through basically from Kenya to Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And then we truck them from Tanzania to our our facility. One of our schools. And how many filters do you do you normally ship in in a particular shipment? Last year we shipped uh, 480. Okay. Um, this year we all at one time. Or all at one time. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. This year we were supposed to ship 200, but there was a little snafu with um, shipping, so we had to pay for shipping. So we were only able to. Uh, pay for 100 filters and ship those. Mm -hmm. um, and that's so much more expensive than shipping a lot as opposed to shipping a, a small amount. But okay. we still want to make sure that we're constantly, uh, you know, shipping our filters over there. But one of the biggest things um, that I wanted to tell you, Don, about our project is that we have amazing sustainability. And what that means is that our staff follows up. We Follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. <laughs> and that's why we why it works, because we're touching everybody at least once or twice a month. Okay. So we're in the schools every day. We're touching the health dispensaries every day. We're touching households, whether we're making phone calls. Well, we don't really use phone calls. We use SMS. It's cheaper. Okay. So we do SMS and or they will go and visit at least once or twice a month. Okay. We're going to talk more about the staff, but we're going to take a break. We'll be back in a couple of seconds. Don't move because there's a lot more we need to talk about. Hi, everyone. The objective of the Wealth Zone University is to change your mind about money to change your financial future. Hi, I'm your host, Don Moraney. In the Wealth Zone University, my guests and I talk about a wide variety of business, financial, and other worldly topics. We are seeking to both educate and entertain you. We emphasize that the informations and discussions are my opinion, perspectives, and ideas, and those of our guests. We in no way intend to deliver or provide financial, tax, or business advice. You should consult with your tax, accounting, financial, insurance, and legal advisors regarding the impact, application, or pertinence of any topic or opinion that we share on the Wealth Zone University. Thank you for being a part of our audience, and please continue to communicate with us through email and Twitter, because this is your show. Welcome back to the Wealth Zone University and our amazing conversation with Kimberly Fogg of the Global Sustainable Partnership Nonprofit Organization. Now, when you hear the word nonprofit, you might hear tax exempt, you might hear um, charities, but the most important thing is that organizations like Kimberly's are doing good and they're doing good around the world and the the water is life is is that the right right phrase that that you're using water is the lifeline of life water the lifeline of, of life project that yeah. is so so vital and 
even though you're working internationally, it's a global concern. Yes, absolutely. Right? Look and at Flint, Michigan. <laughs> look at Flint, Michigan, right here at home. Absolutely. Right. So we don't have to go across the world to have, no. to have the problem, but the problem that you're solving is so vital. And the people that you have on the ground, you said before the break that they actually follow up with the schools and what, what, is, what is their job? How do they help facilitate what Global Sustainable GSP does? Well, one of the beautiful things is when I hired them first, they were just washing and cleaning the sand and the gravel. Now they are our trainers. Fantastic. So they have acquired these wonderful new skills that they wouldn't have had if they wouldn't be working with us, which I'm so proud of because it really gives them an opportunity, even if they want to go someplace else. I hope not because I love <laughs> them and their family and mm -hmm. they're doing such an amazing job. But because of them and because they are Tanzanian and because they work in the communities in which they live, they're the ones that have given us the lifeline mm -hmm. because they're actually going into the communities in which they live and working and they're talking to the people about the clean water and they're following up, which also gives the people who already have filters the opportunity to talk to the other people in the community about how well the filters are doing. Mm -hmm. So we are able to get the buy-in from the community and I think that's probably one of the reasons we've been successful, but one of the things that we do is training, 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 training. We don't just give away the filters. Everybody that gets a filter, they have to actually be a part of the process, washing and cleaning their, their, own, their own sand and gravel. I remember the first time I did this, the teachers came in their Sunday best. They did not know that they were going to be stepping in mud. And <laughs> <laughs> so I felt so bad for them because, but you have to have some skin in the game. Yes, yes, absolutely. And so if any, time it breaks down, they know how to fix it. So one thing about our project is we won't ever be a part of the landscape because people are using their filters mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because they know how to use them. Now you said break down, but the, the filter as, I, as you showed it to me is relatively simple and it's based upon sand and gravel and water flowing through sand and gravel. It is. Simple, simple uh, so tell me more about the, the, filter, the I, filtration I love this system. Thing. Please. It's 100 pounds of sand okay. and it's 20 pounds of gravel. Mm -hmm. And the way that the filter works is that the sand actually cuts off the oxygen, oxygen supply of the pathogens. That's mm -hmm. all of the cholera and the typhoid, mm -hmm. the bacteria. The germs. The germs. Mm -hmm. it, it cuts off. It cuts, it cuts off them being able to enter your body and make you sick. You know, I never thought about germs breathing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not a good thing. Trust me, it'll make you really, really sick. Really, and people die, like mm -hmm, I said, mm -hmm. on a daily basis. And then another thing is if the pathogens can survive in the sand, once you pour the water in, it drowns them. And one of the things that I love about this technology, no electricity is required. And we work in a lot of communities that don't have electricity. So it's gravity fed. So if the water and hopefully people will be able to see the filter, but mm -hmm. if the water comes above the water line, the water comes out. But mm -hmm. if the water is below the water line, no water will come out. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's beautiful to, for households, so that I, there's a saying that I love that's on my uh, tagline, but it, it says, um, if the millions of women who haul water long distances mm -hmm. have faucets by their door, whole societies could be transformed. Wow, that is so poignant. That is absolutely true. And that's what we're trying to do. So the the simple filter, how long does it last? Is it, you know, is it has to be main, doesn't have to be maintained very long. It does how not long have does to it be last? maintained. Eight to ten years. Eight to ten years. Yeah, it's medical grade plastic. It holds 80 liters of water every time you put water in it. Um, you get about a liter about a minute and 30 seconds. So it's not wow. a faucet. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's better than not having anything at all, mm -hmm. and the water is clean. And so we tell people, fill up your buckets in the morning, fill them up in the afternoon, and fill them up in the evening, and then you have access to clean water all day long for your family into the next day. And it also prevents girls from having to go and collect water every day because now you can store your water. Okay. And that has been kind of revolutionary for these communities because the women aren't having to to take off from work or the girls take off from school, like I was saying before, and mm -hmm. go and gather water every day. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they get time back. Your time back. Yeah. And so they can gather water, store it. Yes. And then when they need it, they pour it through the filter. Absolutely. And then they've got clean water. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. And it lasts for 10 years. Eight to 10 now, years. The, the maintenance of it is just changing the sand and the gravel. You don't have to change anything. If you really, you don't have to change anything. Wow. If your water becomes slow, we teach them to don't ever stick your hand in there because it's really toxic. But you can take a stick and, and 
twirl it sometimes because mm -hmm. sometimes the, the, the mud will get stuck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, our filters, our filters are almost six years old and they're wow. still going strong. Wow. So, the, so is it any special kind of sand and gravel or just? Nope. It's just regular old river sand river and sand. it's regular old gravel that you would not believe, but we do wash it mm -hmm. and we wash it several times. Okay. And then we do lay it out in the sun because the sun is a natural filtration, a disinfectant. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so we put it on the tarp and so the sand dries and the gravel dries, but it's just, it's nature. It's like Mount Kilimanjaro. When I go up into Morongo, I can drink the water out of a faucet um, on, the, on the Mount Kilimanjaro. Mm -hmm. But if I'm down in the village, I can't drink the water. Okay, because the, the water in the because mountain the is clear, right. pristine, exactly. and by the time it gets down to the lower level, it's uh, laden with almost everything that, that you can possibly think of. Absolutely. Wow. And so you went into schools first, mm -hmm. and you give the, the uh, water filters to the schools. Yes. And we've taught... Um, the people that, like you said, it's better to have a leg up than a hand out, or um, I don't want, don't want to paraphrase what you said. Right. T a tell hand them, up, tell me. We like to give a hand up yeah. as opposed to a hand out. Yeah, thank you. But children are children, and we want to make sure that we're giving the children an even playing field. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why we wanted to start in the schools. And then we also wanted to make sure that we were um, really cutting down on recontamination. So we didn't want kids to have water in school and then go home and drink contaminated yeah, water. contaminated water. I sure, mean, it sure. just defeats the purpose of mm -hmm. giving them uh, contaminated water. So that brings me to another thing is I, one day I was drinking water from one of my water bottles mm -hmm. and I realized that there was this horrible mildewy smell. And so I said, oh my gosh, we're giving our children clean water, but their water containers are contaminated. <laughs> Wow. So, so the, the clean water comes out and goes into a contaminated, contaminated bottle. Wow. So now we are raising funds for, they're called, they're BPA free water bottles. So it doesn't break down, but we call it our message in a bottle. So, we're, so our donors actually purchase these water bottles mm -hmm. and then they write a special, a special message and we put the message in the bottle. And so when I go to Tanzania, we stuff the bottles. And so when the kids open up the bottle, they have a special, mes a special message from uh, America. And I have several schools that participate in this. So if you go on our website, you can see that our schools write these beautiful, beautiful signs. They raise funds for their sister schools in Tanzania. Okay. And you can see just the joy on the American kids' faces and on the Tanzanian kids' faces because it's almost like a pen pal kind of thing. Oh, wow. So the American kids are actually working hand in hand, yes. helping out the, t the kids in Tanzania. Absolutely. That is so fantastic. Yeah. And that's, that's really special. And so not only are you solving the problem of clean water and giving more value to the lives of these young women, but you're also going down the, the problem line and solving other things like now with these water bottles, they don't have to put their clean water right. into contaminated vehicles. Absolutely. And uh, you told me that the water bottle uh, disintegrates naturally, so it's right. not plastic that's building up. Exactly. Right, tell me more about they're, that. They're environmentally friendly. Okay. Um, we bought them in America um, so that we can say that, you know, we do uh, value our, our work mm -hmm. that we do mm -hmm. in Tanzania, mm -hmm. but we also want people to know that we, we, we value our children in America sure. and we want them to become global citizens because they actually are going to be the next ones that are going to be taking over for me. Right. So we want to make sure that we give them an even playing field in the international world and that we give the children in Tanzania an opportunity to be in an even playing field. So how much does each water unit cost? A filter is $260. $260. Okay. Uh, like I said, it lasts for 8 to 10 years. Mm -hmm. So what's that, $26 a year if mm -hmm. you're well, looking you're at it. You're doing the math. I'm not even going to try uh, that. <laughs> and, and what I love about it, though, is that you don't realize the impact of how much these filters, how much they impact these people. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. one filter for a classroom of maybe 30 or 40 kids, that's just one school year. So for 10 years, just think about how many children right. over an 8 yes. to 10 year yes. period are using these filters. They just, they just multiply. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And how much is a water bottle? A water bottle, we call them a twofer. Twofer. Yeah. So you get two for $12. Okay. So, but the special thing about the water bottles is that you write your own special note and then you send it to me and then we take those notes and we stuff them. And if you go on the website and you look at those pictures with the kids opening up their bottles and, and seeing these mm -hmm. messages mm -hmm. from America, 
There's nothing like it. That's fantastic. They're so beautiful, and they're so excited, and they're so grateful. Now I'm going to take a minute and share that Kimberly just celebrated her fifth anniversary oh, with GSP, and she had a fundraiser that she called Epic. It was uh, pretty epic. It was epic. called Epic by everybody who attended. Yeah. And so yeah. my company is going to give you a check oh, because we're going to fund thank you. Uh, a water filter and as many bottles as you can get out of that, oh, okay? Thank because you we so want to be much. part of that global community that you are helping to move. Thank you so, so much. So tell me more about what happens when you are in Tanzania because I understand that you're there for the six months out of every year. I, I am. Last year, uh, I wasn't there because we were trying to get the filters in country mm -hmm. and trying to raise money. Um, so when we raise enough money, we, I can go over there and I can stay. Um, but one of the things that I want to tell you, it's not just it's not just Kimberly. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a whole entire global village, including you. And it's wonderful people like you who support us mm -hmm. and who tell other people about us. And I always tell people, you know, you don't have to support Global Sustainable Partnerships. Don't get me wrong, I want everybody to support mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. But I want you to support somebody, something that's dear to your heart, something that's helping somebody else. Because the joy that you get from helping others is so amazing. And, and that's what I want people to take away from this, is that it's not necessarily come to Global Sustainable Partnerships, although, don't get me wrong, I want you to come to Global Sustainable <laughs> yeah, Partnerships. Mm -hmm. But there are so many organizations, so many to do. and not even the big ones. Go to the small grassroots ones like we are. I mean, we are so impactful, and I'm going to say this proudly. We're small, but we are changing lives, and we're saving lives, and I see it every day. Well, I'm so proud of you. I mean, in Thank you. five years, you've touched almost 800 families, lives, and schools. And um, your goal for five years is a thousand right. water bottles. So let's see if we can a thousand filters. A thousand filters. Let's see yes. if we can get that other three hundred plus done in the five years you're here. Hey, I want to thank Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. And you can see that uh, being a nonprofit is a big job, but big jobs doing great things make yeah. great things happen for people around the world. Kimberly, thank you. Thank you. You. We'll see you next time. Thank you for being here. Bye.